Economists often use graphs to illustrate how the economy works. We put one variable on the x-axis and another variable on the y-axis to show how one variable affects another. Economists usually draw a demand curve with the price on the y-axis and the quantity on the x-axis. For example, this demand curve for coffee shows the relationship between the quantity demanded per year and the price per pound. The downward slope of the demand curve shows that consumers demand a small quantity of a good when its price is high and a larger quantity when its price is low. A change in price causes a movement along the demand curve. An increase in the price of coffee causes consumers to demand a smaller quantity of coffee. When use graphs to illustrate cause and effect, be aware of two problems, the omitted variable bias and the reverse causality. When we see this demand curve, we would like to ask whether other factors that influence demand are held constant. If yes, the curve shows how demand changes with price. If locked, then the curve may be misleading because demand changes may be due to other factors. It is called the omitted variable bias. The solution could be using specification strategies and estimation methods to alleviate the problem. The panel data fixed effects and the instrumental variables methods are among them. Reverse causality happens when we make mistakes about causality by misreading its direction. A classic example is the positive correlation between the number of violent crimes and the number of police officers in major cities. Could we conclude that police causes violence? Of course not. It's more likely that more dangerous cities hire more police. In many cases, causality is a two-way process. A affects B and B also influences A. It is a simultaneous causality. Let me show you the simultaneous causality in the labor market. We observe the hours of work and wages for each worker and draw the scatter plots. The fitted line is over sloping. Is it the labor supply curve? That is the change in hours of work in response to the change in wages. It's not exactly, because it is the intersections of the labor supply curve and the labor demand curve. Wages affect the hours of work supplied by workers, but the labor supply also affects the wage rates the firms would like to offer. We observe the labor market equilibrium. It represents the outcome of the interplay of demand and supply. To trace out the labor supply curve, we could use the demand shifters and the instrumental variables method or the structural equation system. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.